hope everybody's doing just fine on this lovely what is it wednesday sometimes i just lose track of the day it is wednesday we're almost halfway through the week uh but you know what we love to do here at benzinga is to bring you executives from publicly traded companies so that we can go ahead and get your questions answered in the chat and ai has just been such a hot topic for the past six months we had this lovely guest on earlier but we're going to go ahead and bring uh evan back along with dasha as well uh we've got toggle 3d dot ai uh the ticker is going to be tggglf all access starts right now. Good morning. How y'all doing? Doing great. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Evan, I know you and I have talked before, but it's a pleasure to have you on as well. Uh, you know, glad we can kind of go ahead and have this conversation. I know we've got a couple of demos coming up in uh, just a moment here as well. So excited for that because the last time it was kind of cool as you all did with the furniture thing. So I'm excited to see what you all have in store. But before we kind of get things going here, Evan, I'd love for the viewers at home to find out. So if you could explain it to me, look on five, what is it that your company does? Sure. So we use uh, generative AI to uh, essentially create a 3D modeling studio that's focus is on textures. So you bring a CAD file onto Toggle 3D and uh, you're able to essentially point and click on pieces and parts of the CAD file and texture it. CAD files, if you've ever seen one, they're like this very boring gray metal, you know, kind of color. Um, so we bring it all to life in Toggle. Again, it's AI powered. So everything's point and click. It's quite magical. And Dasha has an amazing demo uh, for you guys to see what it's all about. You know, it's interesting because I'm, I'm in the middle of trying to I'm trying to like this. I'm trying to start like this podcasting. I'm trying to have the, I have the podcast bug and I'm like trying to figure out what logo I want to go with. And of course, instead of you know going to Fiverr and trying to get a designer, I'm trying to get AI to do it. I'm trying to tell them, hey, here's what I want to do. Here's what I'd like to yeah. see. So I'm in that process. So it is very uh, intriguing. But uh, Dasha, I'd love to hear from you in terms of how AI is specifically suited in these types of applications and what is, you know, for what y'all do as well. And then, of course, we can kind of go into the demo whenever you're ready. Uh, you can share your screen, by the way. I believe you hit present on the bottom. Uh, you should be able to share your screen. Yeah, so I'll share my, start sharing my screen here uh, in a short second, unless you had anything to add on before that. But I just wanted to kind of go first to your questions, Zanade, because, you know, you bring up an interesting point. Uh, and Evan brought up CAD files. Um, CAD files, that first industry was really started in like the 1970s. And a lot of that software is kind of that that's kind of the era that it took its rise. Um, and so now that we're in a different era completely with 3D modeling, AI, we've noticed that, you know, these CAD files exist, they're still being made. A lot of the times they're um, sort of regulated that where you have to have a CAD file before you design. So how can we take something that's already there and make it really easy for people to take it out of that software, convert it to a web-friendly 3D format, and then use AI being an AI-first platform to help you texture it, help you get it ready for presentation mode, whatever that means for the end user. Um, and one way that we're doing this, as Evan mentioned today, is by letting you generate textures, um, not just textures, but PBR maps, which ultimately mean textures that are photorealistic. So they react to light the way that this texture would in the real world. Um, and we're doing this couple seconds, you have it on your model um, and you're ready to go and, and kind of take it beyond toggle. We're answering this question of what do you do with 3D models? Uh, we're doing this in an AI first platform. Yeah, yeah. And, Evan, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I would just add uh, that, you know, it's important to put things in, in perspective as an investor, you know, and, and I've been in the, the market, uh, you know, going all the way back to the 1990s uh, and seeing, you know, mega trends emerge. And if you think about, um, AI, AI really is, you know, the computer industry being reinvented. If you think about how powerful a statement that is, I mean, and that's not even me, that's NVIDIA CEO. Um, and I'm just echoing that, that yeah. in every way, like this is a rebirth. And so Toggle is using AI. We are taking full advantage of this immense new opportunity. Toggle could not exist two years ago. It couldn't because it's an AI first platform. Right. So, you know, it's important for investors to understand that Toggle is part of this birth of this whole new industry. 
And without the industry, there would be no toggle. We're leveraging uh, all the, the latest and greatest generative AI technologies uh, in toggle. In fact, um, you know, one of the things to, to think about, you know, again, for investors to think about how big this AI industry has become, graphic processing units, GPUs, are considerably harder to get than drugs these days. I'm just saying, <laughs> it's like, yeah. you know, if you look at uh, the, the marketplace and you're like, you know, how do I actually get computing power? It isn't easy. It's actually become a, a very, very hot commodity. And so we're leveraging AI. Toggle is, you know, right place, right time. Right. We, so, so there's two mega trends happening here. AI is the newest mega trend, but you know we've been in the 3D modeling space, which is what you know AI is uh, being used for on the Toggle platform. We've been in the 3D modeling space uh, going all the way back to 2018, and the 3D modeling mega trend has just exploded. So it's a combination of 3D modeling and AI, and with that, I think it's a good segue to maybe uh do a demo <laughs> yeah yeah again feel free to uh, go ahead and share your screen whenever you're ready and while we guys we, while we set up that demo there interested if one of y'all wants to talk about uh the market uh that this sure. space is looking to disrupt as well especially because you mentioned hey we just started a couple of years ago um so as we get the demo set up on y'all's end what's the market share that you're looking to take here what's that look like so you know, there's a massive, massive opportunity here uh, worth hundreds of billions of dollars. Just look at Adobe, look at AutoCAD, um, you know, look at the, the, these big platforms from big tech companies. Uh, they, they all have some kind of a design studio. You know, primarily it's been 2D. Um, right. and, and AutoCAD is CAD, right? We're basically coming in to disrupt uh, that ecosystem using again an ai first platform they're all bringing ai onto their 2d platform they've also been using you know legacy technology legacy computing power and all of that is very clunky compared to the new tech right, right? ai what's so amazing about ai and the reason why ai has just exploded the reason why the rate of progress is exponential is because it's so easy to use it's you know you type in you know a text prompt and it gives you a whole story right or you could even talk to it or you could show ai a picture and it'll actually turn that picture into a 3d model so ai is just so easy it's so the the, the lift is is you know effortless if you think about it you used to have to, um, you know, hire programmers to program. You can now have what's called a text prompt programmer. Right. Right. I mean, think about that. It, it's just massive, massive, yeah. massive. Uh, so that's kind of what's driving this. And so when you look at the opportunity, it's it is, you know, in the hundreds of billions. And when you compare that to Toggle's market cap, Right now, we're um, undiscovered. There's only a small number of investors. You know, Next Tech, the parent company, spun it out. Next Tech uh, is public and, and still owns almost 50% of the shares of Outstanding. Right. I own uh, about 1.7 million shares. So I'm the single largest shareholder um, with about a 6% stake. But the market cap is only like 12 million US, 16 million Canadian. It's kind of a joke. I mean, it's so undervalued. Yeah. It's clean. So I actually went into the market and bought 15,000 shares just, you know, to, to because I couldn't take it anymore. It's not, yeah. you know, yeah. so I might actually buy more just because it's so cheap. You know, you look at any tech company, right. I challenge you, find me any tech company that has legit AI that's signing up 500 people a day, which is what's happening. We're signing up 500 people a day. Do the math yeah. on that, right? It's a lot. Yeah. And our market cap's only, you know, 12 million US, 60 million Canadian. You can't find other companies like that. It's only because we were like a spin out from a parent 
and there's only a handful of investors that actually know about it, which is why, you know, we're here. Yeah. So, you know, you mentioned about you purchasing the shares and obviously, as they say, not me, not my words, but talk is cheap. You're putting money where your mouth is in terms of what you believe in the company. So that's great to see. And it'll be great to see if you do pick up some more shares. I know you mentioned that you had a demo to share. Yeah. Um, so if you'd like, whoever is going to lead that way, it looks like Dasha, you've got your uh, screen ready to share. So you just give us a thumbs up and we'll go ahead and put that on screen. All right. All right. What we got. Awesome. So I'm just going to verify you guys see the toggle platform right now. We sure do. Welcome back. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So um, here is Toggle. And let me actually just start off by kind of showing you what a CAD file looks like post conversion on the platform. Um, right. So we've talked about manufacturing files. Uh, we've kind of talked about them being sort of this great asset because CAD is not really known to make things look photorealistic on sort of a design perspective. They're more focused on the engineering part of the product. Um, so you bring it onto Toggle, we will decrease the size of it. We've done up to 95% lighter files post CAD conversion. Um, and you get sort of this gray mesh that looks like this. Looks like gray gray room. It looks like my living room couch though. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Except no design, right? Yeah. Exactly. So uh, you have it all separated into parts. We have a massive PBR library that's already built. So just a quick reminder, PBR is those photorealistic, uh, physically based rendered materials that will react to light that they do in the, in the real world. Um, and we have thousands available for you. Um, and I'll just kind of go ahead and just grab a fabric here as kind of what we're usually, we know couches to be and it gets applied instantly. So point and click texturing, that's easy. Right. But here's kind of where the magic happens because, you know, it's great to look through you know all these thousands of different uh, sort of examples but sometimes you're looking for something very specific um, and you know perhaps it doesn't exist in our library so here i don't kind of want to show you where we take texturing which used to be a very very manual very sort of layered process um, you have to you know, kind of create all of these different effects uh, together layer by layer PBR creates all of these effects for you at once, and we're doing this using generative AI. So I'm gonna to get to the fun stuff right away, and then we'll backtrack and kind of talk about a couple other use cases. But here's a typical text prompt that you would expect, uh, as we know generative AI to be today. So in that couch example, um, I can really look for anything. So maybe, you know, maybe I'm looking for a red leather uh, sort of sort of couch, I don't see it in the pre-made library. Um, I want it to kind of look a certain way. What you see here is the AI in real time generating for you what it thinks is red leather. Yeah, so I just wanna, I just wanna pause there for a half second, Dasha. Mm -hmm. If you were listening, what the AI thinks, this is the AI thinking. This isn't from our library that it's searching. Yeah. This is net new. The AI is creating this, which is, again, blows my mind every time I see this. Like, it took me a few times of listening to Dasha before I'm like, wait, wait, wait. Who's ma what's making it? Oh, yeah. this is the AI. <laughs> this is, this is a actually library that has a tag of, hey, if someone types in red and leather, pull this up, or else it would have been part of your offering in the beginning. So this is completely new, generated. By yes. AI in that sense. Yes. Yes. That's the magic here is that it'll literally generate that. And then Dasha will just easily and effortlessly put this on the couch. Yeah. So right before we do that, I just want to point out here. Sorry, let me regenerate this here. Screen Re sharing. Regenerating. <laughs> just because we can. And you'll actually, I'll, I'll prove to you right now that it's uh, AI because the swatches that you'll see right now will not be the ones that you originally saw. So um, but I want to point keep regenerating. Like you could just keep asking yeah. for more variations of the red leather. It's like, show me more red leather. Yeah, and, and something that I want to point out here. So a difference between this and Mid Journey because a lot of us are really uh, familiar with Mid Journey. You'll give it a text prompt and it gives you an image, a 2D image. Um, which is, which is beautiful and it's great, but for 3D modeling, you need more than just that. So I can't just take a, a kind of a picture of red leather and put it onto my 3D model. I have to make it react to light uh, and make it look 
have, have the properties of, of a real material or else it's going to look pretty flat on my 3D model. So I just want to explain that process a little bit because oftentimes it just kind of looks like we draped a 2D image over top of a cube. But what you'll see here, for example, is different properties of that PBR material that I'm able to manipulate on the spot. So on top of that 2D image, uh, we're layering up different properties. A property example could be like metallic. So if your leather is metallic, it'll have a metallic map that you can adjust in real time using these knobs. Um, if you have roughness, I'll actually show you this right here because it's really easy to see. You'll see kind of all of a sudden I decreased roughness and my material is a lot shinier as I kind of move it through the light here. Um, so yeah. these are the layers that make up that PBR texture, which gives it that photorealistic effect. And it's not just, again, creating that 2D image anymore. The reason I really want to bring this up and stress that is because there's not a lot of competitors in the market that are making PBR materials. Um, and if you compare kind of the process of making a PBR using AI versus doing this manually, um, it's quite a, quite a massive difference in time. So we're talking seconds versus hours. Um, and this is kind of one way that Toggle is changing the industry uh, of 3D texturing and adding these new AI first tools. Yeah. So, so just back to disrupting minutes versus hours, right? That's disruptive technology, right? Like that's the difference between if you were working on an Adobe, uh, studio platform, right. it would take you hours here. It's just minutes. And you know, that translates into increased productivity and ultimately, you know, this is a SaaS platform. Everybody that comes on this platform is looking for productivity for, you know, 29 bucks a month. They get all this latest and greatest AI features, um, which, which, you know, there's some wood now. <laughs> yeah. And, and then, so you would just apply this to the couch. Is that correct? Yes. Let me just make one more um, sure. kind of material here so we can put together the red leather and then uh, the wooden sort of finish on top of the couch as well and get a finished product. So I showed you text prompt to PBR right. material, uh, but I also want to show you image to PBR material because, you know, sometimes it's you want to create from scratch, but sometimes you already have so the materials that are pre-picked or you have your manufacturing, you have partners with your vendors and those right. vendors have very specific examples of you know, fabrics or wood uh, samples that you can use for your product. Um, and this is kind of a, a really popular use case we're seeing among sort of product designers on uh, Tavo 3D today. They're a manufacturer and they have vendors. So I, just, I do want to show this use case here because again, this is the 2D image. So we're just taking the swatch right. that I just uploaded, which is a JPG you see right here. I'm putting it on the cube um, and I'm, you know, I'm letting the algorithm know it's a wood. The algorithm then suggests finishes for me, which are ultimately that those PBR maps that we've been talking about that will make this wood look uh, more photorealistic. So we really narrowed it down to four main finishes for wood. Um, I go ahead and press generate. Again, we're creating these PBR maps in the background. You see they instantly get applied. Uh, to my cube here. And then again, I have these properties that I'm able to adjust. If I want it to be more glossy, um, sort of less glossy, I can go ahead and actually you know, change the color of it as well to match my swatch here a little bit better after the PBR maps were applied. And then I go ahead and I save it to my library. So once I've generated these materials, whether I'm starting from an image or from a text, I can go back to my 3D model in that case. I'll go back to this couch. Um, and we'll see that I'm able to apply these materials now that are going to be saved in my material collection. So I'll go ahead and apply the red leather to my couch. Yeah. And then I'll go ahead and also apply the wood to my couch. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> so now the, so you're applying both of them there. Now I'm curious, as you go ahead and add these to your library as a user, as an individual, does it add to the library for other users to go ahead and access as well? No, not yet. So okay. right now this is all proprietary because we are dealing with manufacturers and product uh, designers. And because CAD files are proprietary, everybody has their own library. Got However, it. Okay. 
there's definitely a side of Toggle and we'll see it kind of come to fruition in the next few months here where we're going to be building a community of users where they can right. share and make these different materials, these different scenes um, and, and kind of really take that power of community to spread word of mouth and get people engaged among yeah. the platform. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that makes perfect sense. And, and you know what else, um, you know, Dash and I were talking a little earlier about um, the, the roadmap and, you know, before the end of this year, there'll be a whole photography studio. So imagine, you know, you you have this couch that you've just created and you want to take, uh, photos and use that for your website. Yeah. You'll be able to do that on the platform. Um, you know, just think about all the time and money you save, not having to hire a photographer. Right. Um, you can't really fit this couch in a light box. Yeah. So, yeah. Right. So you'd have to hire somebody and uh, look at how shiny that is. Now, what uh, is this 1K, 2K right now, Dasha? Uh, this is 1K. So right now we're generating at 1K, but we have a lot of upgrades that are coming uh, right. actually next week that will be able to generate these PBR materials in 4K as well. Um, yeah. And then that's when we go from prototyping with these uh, different materials to actually being, you know, a 4K photorealistic kind of uh, representation of these materials. Yeah, 4K is the holy grail. I mean, you know, if you want to have photorealism, realism, you need you need that 4K. So this is just like, again, for visual representation on the platform. Um, but, but then when you export it, you export it as a 4K uh, photoreal, photorealistic um, model. But I mean, this is ridiculously cool. If I go back in time a couple of years and I start thinking about how, uh, you know, much time we used to spend on creating these 3D models and then texturing them. Right. Texturing oftentimes is more complicated than, you know, the 3D model itself, you know, just, just creating all these textures and wrapping it around every single piece of, you know, the couch, the front, the back, the, the, the chairs, and then again, you know, the legs. I mean, if you just think about all the variations of everything that's in your house, yeah, right, and being able to just, you know, do that point and click on this platform, it's, it's, it's super exciting for us. You know, it's interesting that we're doing this because I had a friend come over the other day and she told me that I could really use an interior designer because I'm, I'm, I'm like a minimalist. Like, I don't really have a lot of things. I don't have a carpet under my uh, living room space or whatever. So I might I might have to be a user after this. So it's interesting to me on this. Um, and then I assume the process from here is for the individual to just go ahead and kind of have these text files and send it to their manufacturers or whoever they're working with and then go ahead and just have it made. I don't want to say printed, but have it made. Is that the process? Yeah, let's actually talk about a few use cases here because there's a couple of things that you can do. So now that you have kind of a 3D model that you like, there's a couple different, um, even in this process of creating this 3D model on the platform, what we've been hearing a lot is one of the hardest things uh, about sort of finishing off a product is working with, let's say, your end consumer to come up with a design that you both like uh, and then sort of agree on that design. You price it, you, 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 you manufacture it. Um, and then you sort of have this, this kind of couch ready to go because a lot of what we're hearing from manufacturers is that people like customizations. They want to be able to personalize their items and having kind of offering that experience in 3D with your customer um, is a lot more powerful than trying to customize a couch, let's say in 2D. So that's kind of what one use case is right on the platform. You kind of make these design decisions together. But then we also have it where the same asset could be used on your e-commerce site or for your marketing assets. Yeah. Or even kind of more so now we're hearing the use case of, of uh, VR. So a lot of people are now staging environments and uh, staging games with these 3D models in a virtual reality scene. Yeah. Um, so people are exporting it for that. We also have augmented reality that come with all of these um, objects as well. So if you're trying to envision what this couch now looks in your space, yeah. uh, the end consumer, or you just want to kind of be able to, as a designer, assess this kind of couch in the physical world, you know, with physical items yeah. around it, you have that experience in AR as well. So there's, there's, a, there's a share button right there. Mm -hmm. You could On share. Top right, yeah. Yeah, you could literally share a link. Uh, right now mm -hmm. with whoever, I don't know if you want to give us your email. 
and uh me i can yeah i can do that no problem it's my name at uh, zunaid at benzinga.com easy enough yeah so we can literally send it to you um but you know we also just we're, we're starting to do more integrations in it where i don't know if you've heard of sketchfab but they were acquired by epic uh games um you know the creator of fortnite i think mm -hmm. and so those guys have like a community of uh, 10 million uh, 3D artists, and they have, uh, I think, 5 million um, actually uh, 3D models on their yeah. platform, so something like that. Yeah. Anyway, Toggle just, oh, she's got it up on screen. There it is. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. look at the screen, upper right hand corner, you'll see Sketchfab. Okay. She's in a Sketchfab account. We could pull the Sketchfab 3D models into the toggle studio and change mm -hmm. the texture on any of these models. So think about what I'm saying. You have one model that all of a sudden turns into many models, right? So, right. Because you could change the, the color, the texture, the look. So she just brought in this, uh, this model from Sketchfab. And what's so cool about it is you notice how when she just puts the, the cursor over the different parts mm -hmm. and it lights up, it comes in in parts. Right. Right. So you can texture the hood, the, the window, the door, the tires, all different. You know, it's very, very customizable. Is there a way that you would be able to possibly, and again, I'm just thinking out loud here of use cases. Is, there, is this how you'd be able to, transform it into a file that could then be kind of like 3d printed or is that something that's in the works as well or what are we looking at there yeah so 3d printing file is a format called stl and we actually recently did add support for it and so awesome. now any of these things you can also export an stl and then use as part of 3d see project. evan your team's killing it look at that I didn't even know this. <laughs> i'm like no <laughs> <laughs> I think well, I, that's the first thing I thought of is when I see these cars and when I see like these, you know, immediately when I saw that, I thought of like a toy, a to toy for, you know, my nephew or my niece. And so that's why I'd asked that question. Um, but that, that's, that's incredibly cool. cool. That is cool, right? So you could basically design your 3D printable right. object in, in toggle and then just export into a, a 3D printer and boom, you got your. That's very cool. I didn't know we could do that. That's awesome. Well, there you go. Hey, learn new things every day. And that that is definitely going to be another use case. Um, uh, we did, I had a couple of more questions before we did wrap up, but I definitely don't want to interrupt the demo. Was there anything else y'all wanted to show us? Well, I just would uh, also say that, you know, it goes beyond, you know, and this is something you only find out when you get into the business, but we're finding, you know, like um, builders and landscape designers that are actually using the platform um, beyond what maybe we had in mind, where, yeah. you know, they're, they're using it. I mean, you could think about a kitchen and you could do kitchen countertops. You could do your kitchen yeah. cabinets, right? All, yeah. you know, all those things that go into, you know, home uh, renovations can also be used on the platform. And we're creating templates so that you could have, let's say, you know, a template of an island uh, in a kitchen, and you're just changing, you know, the 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 granite uh, to to whatever granite you want it to be. Or right. you know. So there's just so many use cases for this, um, and you know we're we're kind of beyond excited uh, with where this is headed. It's still just the first inning. You know, we're just just getting right. this launch. We just launched in. Uh, I think we went public in June. Mm -hmm. Stock went as high as like four dollars and uh, fifty cents. It's trading now um, at like a ninety percent discount. <laughs> you know, it's right. trading at like like fifty cents or seventy five cents uh, Canadian. Right. And um, you know, the stock is really uh, not reflecting all this great potential. And if you think about you know all these um, people that are signing up. Maybe one day they become shareholders. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if, you know, if they, if they like what they see, they see the use case of it and they kind of see the market share that y'all can take. But, uh, Evan, a question for you from the chat that I told them I would ask, are you able to talk about the 
financial health of your company and give us a little insight in terms of revenue and where you stand there? Yeah, we raised uh, a little over $2 million, um, just self-funded, just self-financed uh, right. this in again in June. Uh, so we're cashed up. Um, we just hired, so, so the first phase, you know, we're doing this in phases was building the product, build the product in beta. So we spent like six, seven months in beta with Dasha, uh, really working with the users to create uh, a product market fit. So that, that was like the first, uh, six months of the year. Then we, you know, raised a couple of million, went public. Then we spent time getting, uh, signups. And it's a freemium model, so you basically get um, right. you know, some features for free, and then you move up to to the paid. So we, our goal was just to get people on the free uh, for the first uh, couple of months, mm -hmm. and we're now pivoting. So we had, you know, we announced over ten thousand people uh, have signed up. That we've seen like three hundred percent growth in the number of signups. Um, we haven't released uh, financials yet. But again, the, the, this is phased. Right. So, and this is purpose. You know, we're doing this on purpose, right? Because um, the last thing you want to do is get people onto a platform, get them paying, and then stuff's not working the way they want it to. So, we yeah. spend a lot of time working with our uh, user base to make sure that it fits their needs. Um, and so, we've recently hired uh, a marketing director from Amazon. Uh, and so, you know, she's a blue chip um, hire and she's now uh, brought her team together. And so the goal now is to start to drive more people onto the platform and focus on revenue and, and converting them. So, uh, you know, in Q4, I mean, we're almost done with Q3. We, we are going to start to see a significant increase in the signups and also in revenue. And this is all by design, so Nate, this is like, yeah. we've mapped it out. So, um, you know, we feel like we're in a great position. The fact that we're getting um, five, 600 people a day onto the platform, I mean, that is a testament to the demand that's in the market. Uh, that's with limited to no marketing. That's again, you know, like yeah. you didn't hear of us before today. I mean, yeah. other than the last yeah, time. our last conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but you're right, though, because I didn't know this technology kind of existed, um, especially with, you know, the 3D aspect of it, as I mentioned uh, as well. So no, no question about that. Uh, I did want to go ahead and give a final, you know, floor to y'all. Dasha, we can start with you if you had anything to add, Evan, and we'll end it with you. So sure. Dasha, it's all yours. Awesome. So kind of out in the product perspective, I'm super excited for where we're currently at, but also the things that we have on the roadmap that, you know, maybe we'll get a chance to also share. we will definitely hear more about it. Um, the team is doing an amazing job. We're seeing a lot of testament from our users and we are really building this as a user first platform, listening to all the feedback and making sure that we are hitting these pain points in the market that we're told by our current users, they, they're not being solved right now. Um, so we're very excited and I'm, I'm excited to show you all what's to come. Yeah. Looking forward to that roadmap that you talked about in the near future as well. Evan, what about you? Yeah. I would just say that, uh, you know, Toggle's goal is to become a key player in this first generation of AI first, uh, platforms. Right. And, you know, if you look at AI, um, Toggle's running towards it. And you, you need to run because if you don't run towards AI, you will be left in the dust. You will be left behind. So, you know, this platform uh, is geared towards, you know, this whole AI revolution. Um, and if you look at NVIDIA, which, you know, is, is you know, the mo world's most valuable uh, listed semiconductor company, right? That everybody, right. you know, all of a sudden like exploded onto the scene. Yeah. They're the major supplier of computer chips. We use their chips and our goal is to be the major supplier of software for the 3D modeling industry. Well, hey, I definitely look forward to that journey. I look forward to more conversations with you. Evan, Dasha, thank you so much for hanging out with us here today. Thank you, Zunit. Absolutely. And for you in the chat, we appreciate you for joining us for the conversation as well. And definitely go ahead and check out the website. Again, it's a freemium uh, you know, service, so you can absolutely go ahead and see what works for you. 
and kind of test it out. To me, I love the you know interior design thing, and I was serious. Uh, I did have someone tell me I need to spice up my look at my place, but I, for me, it's the 3D aspect of it is how you can go ahead and create something uh, visually and then have it printed and modified, whether you're looking to sell it or use something in that service type of field. But nonetheless, we appreciate you for hanging out. Thank you to Evan and Dasha for joining us. That was Toggle 3D AI. Ticker is TGGLF. And thank you for watching All Access. Bye.